Hi, I'm your AI narrator. This is the main menu. Click on various sections and I will explain them. I would suggest you to explore the story section first. The button is located at the top left hand corner. The core question that inspired this story is that when artificial intelligence replaces our job, what will we become? And how should we face the new reality where we have little to contribute to society? This might seem very far away, but in China, automation and AI has already started to displace the less privileged. A class of useless people, which is coined by the scholar Yuval Harari in the book Homo Deus, is emerging on the streets of Xinjiang. They are called Sanher Dashen which means Sanher Gods. The Sanher Gods were originally aspiring migrant workers from the countryside who came to Xinjiang aspiring to live a better life. However, most of them could not find a stable job and became Sanher Gods. Each morning, at 5 a.m., they would be waiting outside the talent market, fighting for the limited day job slots. Those who manage to get a day job will be sent to factories and construction sites that need extra manpower to pick up rubbish or do other tasks no one wants to do. When they can't find a day job, they will sleep on the street in Sonor and survive on offerings from others. Some of them starve to death or even go crazy. The community has a culture of work one day so that you can play for three days. They call themselves gods, as they have transcended the desire for climbing up the social ladder, living a carefree life without goals nor aspirations. But the harsh truth is that since 2018, factories such as Foxconn plans to replace 80% of workers with robots in the next decade. In near future, there will be more Sanher gods and less jobs. Many Sanher gods have accepted such life. Song Chun Jang, for instance, sold his identity card on the black market for urgent cash. Without his identity, he could never take up any permanent jobs ever again. He is also in heavy debt from internet loans, there is no way he can ever return the money. Yuval Harari worries that the problem of the useless class is not just the loss of jobs or income, but more of a sense of despair when you are locked out of the only perceived way of a meaningful life, which in many people's case, is about earning money, gaining status etc. You will lose your hope in life and find it harder and harder to get up in the morning to do anything. So these Sonar Gods will only find work when they are hungry and eat the cheapest noodles. They stay in dirty clustered internet cafes and waste their days away in online gaming. The scary fact is that with the AI revolution further widening the social gap, we can even expect those originally hard-working folks getting replaced by AI. So this is a map of Xinjiang and the Sonor area is in the heart of the electronic factory district, Longhua. The Sonor talent market is highlighted yellow here. It is surrounded by urban villages populated by Sonor gods. In the future, even more workers will be displaced and they will cluster in these slum-like urban villages. This will become a huge social problem that needs to be addressed. So that is the problem I'm investigating in this project, and I'd like to create a community for the useless class where they could have a new set of aspirations in life so that they can still live a purposeful life even after they are replaced by AI. So I'm imagining a new community built on the grounds of the San talent market, where every useless class can now have a new start to build his future. Since they are unable to progress in life by earning money, we can introduce another form of progression, which is in terms of social credit scores through contribution to the community. This system is inspired by the government's social credit system and the computer games where they are spent all their time in. The social credit system we have is very much like the quest and reward system in role-playing games. As players complete quests, they gain experience, level up, unlock new spaces and receive items to play the game better. Their ultimate reward for finishing the game is to upload their consciousness into the digital world where they could be whoever they want in a virtual heaven. The path to the digital heaven, which is the top of the tower, takes many decades. Most of the community including the tower are designed for the residents to spend most of their days meaningfully. I will now bring you into the tower which is the symbol of hope in this community. 
The tower houses the key industry of the community which is e-waste recycling. In fact, right now 70% of the e-waste in the entire world end up in China, and the majority are dumped around smaller cities near Xinjiang. So the tower is made up of six sections and each section is designed to house specific activities that correspond to the current social level of the resident. As you accumulate social credit score, higher levels will be opened up to you so you'll have more choice on what you want to do. And when you reach level 100, you will be able to go to the top where the digital heaven awaits. This is the dashboard like a game menu that displays the data of residents. The tower houses the key. The very first space that is open to the newcomers is the e-waste dump, which is also the scavenging arena. The very first residents can redeem their rewards to exchange for services like haircut or food. But most importantly, they get equipments that will make their effort easier. In this case, these are various gears that help in scavenging. The very Every morning, trucks carrying e-wastes will dump them to the ground. Scavengers take up quests in this area to pick out the valuable e-waste from the dumping ground. The quest in this section is to collect any many valuable e-wastes as possible. And just like in computer games, the residents can choose different difficulties where they will receive higher rewards for the harder quests. For example, if you are strong and fast, you can compete in the battle royale mode where you earn additional rewards for outwinning other competitors. And at the end of the day, the leftover junk will be pushed into the incinerator to generate electricity for the community. The very first space that is open to the newcomers is the e-waste dump. The second space open to residents is a sorting arena. The second space open to re The scavenged e-wastes are moved upwards in the central pipe. Sorters have to classify the e-waste by running around and throwing them into their specific chutes. All the sorted e-waste will go up the peripheral suction pipes to the next space which is the dismantling arena. The sec Here are various equipment that residents can redeem to make their task easier. They could also form teams where the teammate can share rewards together. The second space open to residents is a sorting arena. The third space opening to residents is the dismantling arena. The sorted wastes need to be dismantled into components for further processing. The third space Residents gradually receive various equipment which makes the dismantling process easier. The third space opening to residents. For instance, monitors need to be dismantled into CRT, circuit board, cables etc. In this area, there are mobile capsules on the outlets of the sorted waste pipes. The capsules rise from the bottom to the top. In the quest mode, residents work in the capsules to dismantle the e-waste within a given time. The more experienced ones can also choose to compete in team races, where each capsule is a team, and the cumulative progress of dismantling determines the speed of the capsule rising. The third space opening to residents is the dismantling arena. The next space is the heavy machinery zone, where the dismantled parts are melted and processed into coarse mixtures of materials. The next space. The zone is separated into four identical sections. Players work in teams to adjust the different settings of the machines on the fly to adapt to the incoming raw materials. For example, they need to adjust temperature or pressure settings to create a ferrous metal mix, or a plastic mix as the input from the below zone changes. The four teams can compete against each other and the best team could win a bonus reward. The next space is the heavy machinery zone, where the dismantled parts are melted. 
The next space is the maker space, which is a mixture of refineries, labs and classrooms. Residents who have enough social scores will be able to finally render learn about various processes and contribute to improving the experience of the community. They could be teachers that facilitate the learning process, or engineers to operate advanced machinery. Render the more experienced residents can be inventors to create schematics for new equipment and spaces to improve the lives of other residents. This zone is dynamic and full of places to explore. The This zone. In this space, the raw materials separated by the heavy machinery below are converted into valuable materials such as precious metals like gold and platinum. The refineries and labs are blended together with learning, working and leisure spaces. The next space is the maker's. Eventually, one will be offered the final reward of the community, which is to upload his consciousness to the digital world where he can be one with the AI. Along the progression, residents could come to the altar to witness the formation of their digital avatar. Underneath the altar, there is a museum open to the rest of the residents where they can interact with the uploaded beings which continues to motivate them. The uploading ceremony is a monthly grand event held in the altar, where eligible residents with higher scores will be invited to attend. The uploading ceremony is a monthly grand event held in the altar. Eventually, one will be offered the final reward. Eventually, one will be offered the final reward of In the realm of immortality, the altar and theater are surrounded by data pods which houses the digitized consciousness of the uploaded residents. In the middle is the supercomputer, which is also the AI which manages the social credit system, governs the community, and maintains the digital heaven. Eventually, one will be offered the final reward of the community, which is to upload his consciousness to the The tower houses the key industry of the community which is e-waste recycling. The bottom-up urban transformation is enabled by regenerative nodes that we insert into the current fabric. Each of the nodes is actually a mini 3D building factory. Firstly, the factory receives raw materials such as plastic, metal and glass from the makerspace and creates PPVC modules. Then, the modules are then hoisted upwards to the crane, which helps to install completed modules onto the top of the existing residential blocks. The node also serves as a platform where residents can build civic spaces from the schematics designed by the inventors in the makerspace. Now, I will bring you into the urban village to see how the urban fabric is gradually transformed. The transformative process can be separated in three stages. In the first stage, the nodes are added and linked to the factory tower with Skywalk. These surveillance poles are also added to reinforce the current buildings, to support the placement of additional roof structures. Gradually, as the residents in the community level up and get more rewards, they can pool their points together to improve the community by growing the civic spaces up to their preference. Eventually, as the engineers and inventors in the makerspace create new schematics, each of the neighborhoods can grow in very different directions. So one community might like to be rich in night activities and another might wish to go green with urban farming. Eventually, the transformative process can At stage 1, the residents are still mostly staying in the current condition, but already have the social credit system in place. The trans At stage 1, the residents are still mostly staying in the current condition, but already have the social credit system in place.
the transform. At stage 2, residents begin to use the regenerative node to build better housing on the existing structures of the urban village. The transformative process can be separated in the I governed benevolent dictatorial society is hailed as a communist utopia. With the raw materials extracted from the maker space, the current urban villages can be slowly transformed by its residents in a bottom-up manner. As you can see from the master plan, we want to inject a new circulation that connects the tower to the urban villages. The Sky Boulevard facilitates pedestrian circulation as well as the transportation of essential materials. Hi. Hi. The tower acts as a symbol of the progression system in the community. One is initially replaced by AI and cast out into this neighborhood. He starts his life afresh by taking up quests posted by the AI. After accumulating enough experience and knowledge, he is able to work with the AI to create value for the community. Eventually, he becomes recognized for his service and is invited to join the virtual world maintained by AI. This progression contrasts the current condition of the workers in Shenzhen, where they are only exploited for their youth. Once they cease to be competitive, they will be abandoned like e-waste. Whereas here, like how e-wastes are slowly turned into gold, there is a definite path to advance upwards. For each higher level you reach, you will become more valuable for the community. Eventually, you become immortalized as a testament for all.